Hello and welcome to the absolute game of nerds with your non-geek, non-nerd hosts, JP and Rohan. And today, episode 22, we still think, we're not positive, but episode 22, we have a special guest. We have Rage Theo, also known as Theo tonight. He is with us. We're excited to have him. Rohan, give this man a proper introduction, please. Uh, yeah, so I mean, if any of you guys are buying comic books, I'm sure you've heard of uh, Rage Theo. JP and I always like to joke when you go to a con uh, and you see these curmudgeon old men selling comic books, you're like, what are they doing? Uh, Rage is the opposite of that. We've talked about how like we even like to watch claim sales just because they're fun to watch. Rage is a perfect example of that. So Rage, Theo, say, uh, say hello. How's it going? Hey, uh, Ron, JP, appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we kind of usually always just get right into this, uh, Theo. So uh, we always kind of start with your your origin story. So uh, I think most people know you're the big X-Men guy. You got the Wolverine swag on today. Uh, kind of tell us how it all got started, you know, as a wee lad. Uh, okay. Well, you know, long story short, because uh, I don't want to go on for, you know, I don't want to talk about my origin for an hour, but... Uh, I've always been a superhero fan, I think, since I was born. You know, I got baby pictures where I'm dressed up as Superman, Ninja Turtles. I grew up in the 80s, so, uh, you know, Michael Keaton, Batman, Ninja Turtles, X-Men, uh, Spider-Man. That's just always been my thing. And a funny story is I would always ask my parents to take me to the comic shops, right? They would never do it. They, they just wouldn't do it. My dad, he instead, he, he would take me golfing. <laughs> he would say, no, I'm signing you up for wrestling. Uh, no, football practices now, we can't go. Um, so that was like a part of my childhood that like I never really got, you know? Uh, the only time I really got exposed to comics and like superheroes was the Saturday morning cartoons, watching the X-Men, Batman Adventures, right? Uh, Spider-Man, all that jazz. Yep, those are the top three yeah, for me it was, too. Almost like a, it was almost like a secret. You know, because all my friends, they they all did sports. Nobody read comic books. You know, I, I become a teenager, dating girls and going to parties. Nobody wants to hear about Wolverine, right? No, no, nobody wants to talk about Iron Man. Like, it's just, it was like a secret, bro. I was like ashamed of it. You know what I mean? Go to college. I get married. I have kids. And this is right around the time that the MCU starts. Like, really, like, Iron Man, Captain America. So I'm like, oh, snap. Besides watching cartoons and crappy 90s superhero movies, you know, Ben Affleck, Daredevil, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, there's some really cool stuff happening. So I would go to the movies midnight when they'd come out by myself. You know, none of my friends wanted to come with me. Eventually, my son gets old enough and I take him to go see. I think the first movie we went to go see together was uh, Avengers Infinity War. Right. Uh -huh. He loved it. We went to go see Endgame, saw Cap Lift Millionaire, you know, get those goosebumps. I'm like, yo, this, this is awesome. And he's like, yeah, how come you don't have any comic books? And I'm like, I don't know. So that that's when it changed, honestly. And I have the MCU to thank for that. I'm one of those people, like I said, I've always loved superheroes, but it was the MCU that brought me to this hobby. I, I will always give credit where credit's deserved. Hands down, it was the movies that like literally rekindled my love for supers. And to this day, my son, he reads a comic book every day. Um, and slowly, as I started getting back into collecting, I'm like, okay, what do I want to collect? And you guys know, when you, get, when, you get, when you start comic books and any new person that gets into comic books can relate to this, it's like overwhelming. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You go to like, okay, what did I like as a kid? X-Men. Spider-Man, you know, I just, I just went for the core. And ever since then, I've just been hitting it pretty hard ever since. I, don't I ask me that. when I turned into a seller, because it just, esc it just it, things escalated quick. And uh, <laughs> like Will Ferrell, right? And, and here we are, you know, here we are. You know, <laughs> Will Ferrell. <laughs> it's uh, it's, uh, it's been about almost three years since I got back into comics. Okay. Um, yeah. So let me let, let me ask you real quick. Does your wife want to talk about Wolverine and Iron Man, or is it still kind of the same thing as when you grew up? Not at all. Not at all. She appreciates it, right? She knows that it makes me happy, and she wants me to be happy, right? So yeah. She supports it. I wouldn't be able to do any of this without her. I give her all the credit. Whenever I do a claim sale, she's watching the kids. 
Whenever I'm doing a webinar sale, she's got him on lockdown. She, she's like, this is what makes you happy. I want to support you. But uh, yeah, she wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, think, I, think, do with it, man. She's I, like, I, I, I think all our wives are in the same boat on that one. Although I will, uh, give, I will give her credit though. She's into anime. She loves Sailor Moon, Pokemon. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, so we get that we get that crossover, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, my I'm wife like, won't. She won't one. even. My wife won't even like contemplate watching a movie like with me on this kind of thing. So that's at least a step ahead of me. No, she'll she'll watch it if it comes to streaming. But she going to the theater? Nah, you could take the boy. Go ahead, I'm good. What What is the boy reading every day? Like, what is he? Is he same stuff as you? Or oh, he, he's Spider Man and Iron Man. That's that's his thing. That's his thing. Nice. I think Spider-Man wise, honestly, I'll give him credit. He's read more than I have. I think he's he's read everything from Amazing Fantasy to Spider-Man One, all the way to I think he's at two hundred now, and he's wow. read like some of the like Web of Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, twenty ninety nine. I mean, he's he's in there. He's in there. Nice. All right. Yeah. Does he so, collect comic books as well? Then. He tries. He tries. He, so he's nine, and he's just now starting to get the grasp of like not taking a book and being, you know, oh. slamming it down. But like for the longest time, I had to teach him like, hey, try to be delicate with it. You know, I'll give him like reader copies. Like when he read the Spider-Man one through like fifty, it was like um, all of the reprints. Right? Yeah. So I bought I bought him all the reprints, but. Yeah, it took him a while to like respect the book. And I didn't want to push it too much because the mere fact that he wants to read a comic book, I'm like, you know what, man, here, do it however you want. I don't want to critique it yet. You know, when you get a little bit older and we buy you an expensive book, then we can go over that. But he already sees how I do it. He sees me doing top loaders, slabbing. Like, he, he's already getting like the, the, okay, this is why dad does this. Yeah. yeah. Well, appreci yeah, he has appreciation for the, the collecting part of it. Then there's a reading part. That's why they call them readers that you can you know, right. buy and read through. But then the ones you keep nice. Um, so I get that. Um, which, which interesting is though, you, are you a reader or are you a collector or both? So I would say I'm a, I'm, I would say I'm more of a collector than a reader. I do read, but my reading boxes are like three long boxes. And I'm like, I'm going to get to this one day. Yeah. One day, you know, like as you guys know, I mean, I got three kids, I'm selling, yeah. I'm hunting. Half the time, it's like, man, I want to read this right now. I just don't have the time to. So, honestly, for me and for anybody that's out there that doesn't have the time or is going through the same thing that I am, if you've ever heard a channel called Comics Explained, I have heard of this. Yeah. That is how I get my knowledge for the stories because I'm more of like a, don't get me wrong, I like reading, I like touching it. It's weird. I like to smell it whatever you just don't always have the time to right and admittingly yeah, i have a little bit of add so i could read like three pages and i won't remember what i just read <laughs> you know what i'm saying I, I won't remember a damn thing but when i watch it or i see panels of somebody talking about it dude that stuff sticks like a sponge mm -hmm. yeah i don't say that too like sometimes like with the three i have the three kids too as we talked about but like even when you do get that free moment, like, oh, I can actually read something now. Oftentimes, I'm just like, I don't have the brain capacity to absorb reading right now. Yeah, I'll fall asleep. I'm not yeah. I will literally fall asleep reading a book. It's just, I just don't have the attention for it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get a lot of grief on our other show, um, Absolute uh, Geek Show, that I don't read any of the books. I'm just into, I like collecting. I like the iconic covers. I was a huge McFarland fan, so I bought all those. I love the artwork in there. And replicated it but reading the story to me was you know i didn't really do it very often and recently the only book i had a chance to read was exo man of war one through four i found the graphic novel and i read that book i don't know why just because i found the graphic novel i got back into that little nostalgia from the 90s and i read it and it wasn't that good <laughs> i was like well and that's, that's what everybody, everybody keeps saying right like and don't get me wrong i love jack kirby stanley art to me they're the best but when you go back and read those stories, bro, it is like a thesis on one page. You're like, I know. <laughs> can you guys just fight? <laughs> Man, dude. I want to see the artwork, yeah. It's hard, dude. It's hard. It's hard. I mean, I, I heard, you know, how great the um, Dark Knight 
uh, books are, right? So those were written by Frank um, Miller. Oh, Frank, Frank Miller. Miller. Love those. Yeah. See, would love to read oh, that. Those are great. Started and I was like, I'm lost, and I just put it down. I got the graph, you know, the novel with all the four of them in there. I yeah. was going to read it. Didn't I have Miracle Man one through four? I was going to read that too. I heard Alan Moore does bang up job on that one. You know, they're just still sitting there. <laughs> you, you know, you know what you would really enjoy, and it's like. Lots of action, good dialogue. It doesn't take a character forever to say something. Hands down, I've been preaching this since I got back in the hobby. Chris Claremont, John Byrne, X Men. You can't go wrong. Oh yeah, that run is. Oh, is yeah, that three. run is like everything I grew. And that's also like I feel like a lot of the stories from, like that you find in the animated series, um, oh, came from that that yeah, run. It's everything, bro. Ninety four. I mean, ninety four to three hundred. Yeah, that, that is. That's X Men Bible right there. You yeah, know? <laughs> that's and Claremont started the first couple, not all of them, and that X Men one. I think he got to three, maybe. We talk uh, about the, the original. The the eight million copies that were made. Oh in yeah, 19. he did the first. He did the first um, three, and then he was out. You're and talking about Jim, Jim Lee run. Yeah, Jim yep. Lee then did. Yeah. He wrote four as well as as drew it. Right. Okay. And there's a lot of good artists that are in that. 94 to 300 like i said you know you have like the uh cockroom in there there's some Bermuda. you know you got a lot of good people i, I okay so I've, I've pushed back there so i've told jp this i cannot hand i think john Bermuda's art on the x-men in that run i think is awful i think it's by far the worst i respect there. it i respect it it's not the best but i appreciate that there's different legends that yeah con that contributed to that you know told, i mean you got like you said like you said i mean cockroom burn obviously your legends and then you got Jim Lee was in there and Will J. Portacio and like, yeah, there's some I was gonna say, yeah, Portacio. Yeah. Mark Silvestri. He's yeah, not, John Romita artists. Jr. is worse than John Romita, is he not? Oh, John Romita Sr. is fantastic. I mean, he's the, as far as I know, he's the best Spider-Man artist. Like, he's incredible. His son, I don't love as much. No, hey, hey, John, you, I think you like him better than McFarlane, though? I don't. Oh, I, yeah. I, so I, I, I really I like know, this. I, I really like the whole Silver Age shtick. And so like, Kirby's my favorite. Um, I like Always. Rita. I like Bashim. I like I like that kind of old school art. So yeah, there I you know. I yeah. like his I like his Spider Man over Todd. Not saying like Todd is obviously phenomenal. He's the Todd like, father. Come on now. Yeah, I mean don't get me wrong. He's he's phenomenal as well. But like if I had to pick a Spider Man artist, I'm picking Ramita all day. Yeah, I do yeah. think I do think I like I do like Todd Spider Man better than Ditko Spider Man though. I don't know about that. I like Ditko though. See? Yeah. I like Ditko too. I'm just saying, if I had I to rank, Ditko, Ditko would go behind Todd. I I said this before, Rohan. We don't agree on this. I as iconic as Jack Kirby's artwork is, I cannot stand it. I, I I can appreciate it, but I I have this art book from the '90s that showed how to draw Marvel comics, and Bushima was in there, and Ramita, and and um, Kirby was not, but they featured his art, and I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> Who did this? And I was like, Kirby. Uh, well, Theo, you, also need, you need to understand, JP is a big fan of, like, Gen 13 and J. Scott Campbell and Alex Ross. Like Adam the, Hughes. Uh, yeah, if you know the, the type I, I of love female. Alex. I love Alex of, Ross. But the type of female characters that they're drawing. Jack Kirby was Didn't a drawing. You some nice female characters. <laughs> yes, he he did. Not, yes, yes, he did. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. The... So you guys remember in the X-Men one, Jim Lee one, they had pinups in each or the foldouts. Yeah. yeah. There was the one where there was like the swimming pool ish or one. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah Jim, Jim Lee definitely did know how to draw some, some ladies. There's no doubt about did, that. I mean, look at that. That's, that's Adam Hughes greatness right there. <laughs> Little Tomb Raider. I've been appreciating some Michael Turner lately, actually. Yes. He's been, he, I, he does a pretty good job. So on that, do you collect um, modern stuff then, Theo? Uh, I do. I do. I'm pretty picky on the modern stuff that I do keep, but uh, I think you guys have seen. Um, so I have, uh, I have a nine, eight signature, um, John Wick, number one, first print signed by Giovanni Valletta. You know, that's, that's one of my grails, you know, as, as an, as a kid, I always related to Wolverine as an adult. I relate to John Wick. Okay. I, since you yes. brought that up, let's, and you kind what of look came, like Jono anyway. Yeah, so say, what came that's, first, John that's, Wick that's or Theo? Theo? What came my first? Alter ego. And like now that I have kids and a family, like I relate to that character even more because it's oh, yeah. like, man, if if something happened or like my happiness got taken away from me like that, there'd be no mercy. I would be a John Wick. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah no mercy. What yeah. it's 
funny that you said about your alter egos because I was watching, I don't know how many different elite, you know, uh, the, this claim sales. And then you were on the one day, I'm like, when, is that Keanu's brother doing these things now? Like I, 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 all of a sudden you were there because I was used to seeing who's the, who's the, um, the main guy from elite that started at least. Well, I forget uh, his name. Oh, Bill. Bill. Bill and Ali. Bill, Ali. Yeah. And I thought it was just him and the other guy. And then I'm like, then you showed up. I was like, they got a celebrity here. Look at this. Are they having people, actors come in and whatnot? And, <laughs> and then I realized that you started you started working with them and whatnot. So I, I was new to it last year when that happened. So it switched over for me. I was like, what's going on here? Yeah, so great I, people. I can over totally there. see that. Yeah. I think I'm actually uh, doing some work with them next week. Yeah. So you do occasional, not to get out too off topic here, but you work with them occasionally on claim sales because you were on them almost weekly, I saw. Uh, yeah, I, I do part-time uh, co-hosting. Yeah. Okay. Um. Nice. Yeah, wait, so what, what what did you say? What came first? The John Wick or you you? Or is that just a coincidence that it worked out like that? He looks just like you. Uh that's just that's just a coincidence. Yeah. Oh. That's just a coincidence. <laughs> I, I mean the comic book itself came out in two thousand and eight or nine. Um so that came out before I got back into comics. Is that how old John Wick is? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't, I don't um, really know. Pretty sure, pretty sure. Great I, series too. If you ever read it, it's pretty spot on to the movies. Okay, I didn't know it was except a, for like, uh, except for John Wick three and four, it's kind of not like the comic books because it's a pretty short series. But I think one and two is pretty spot on with the material. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know it was a comic. So I mean, that I don't. I, I've and that's seen... the thing. Most people di don't know it's a comic book. You know, and all the short boxes i've gone through i know i've seen the authority right but i didn't think it was worth a damn until now how yeah. did i not see i don't know how i didn't see a john wick because i'd have picked it up in a second you won't see a john wick in a short box or a collection the the print run on that book is so low and mm -hmm. that book was so like niche when it came out most people didn't pick it up right because it came out before the movie so nobody knew about that book, not to mention a lot of people don't talk about how hard of a book that is in high grade. I have a 9-8 blue label, 9-8 signature series. I had a customer, AOK -OK me, uh, a second print signed by Keanu. Oh, yeah, means, you posted that. I saw that recently. There's only one graded copy uh, on the census. So I think this might be like maybe the second one in existence. I watched the YouTube video where he did that signing. <laughs> nobody handed that man a comic book. Nobody. No John Wick comic book. Like, so I'm like, dude, how many are even in existence right now? You know? I, I so know that, that's like one of my grails. Um, yeah, that's that's a, that's that's my character right there, dude. Yeah, yeah he, that was a badass. I mean, I did not see four yet, but it's a badass movie. I mean, all, I mean. Great movie number four, bro. Great movie. I want to get to see it. I, I probably, it's probably the theaters now where I'm at. I'll catch it on, on video. But I, I saw three. I thought they were great. He's, he's great in that role. He, you know. He was just great in just about everything he's been in. So from the Matrix to Speed to John he's, Wick, he he's just a Rambo of our time right now, you know. Yeah, and and, and not and even trying to be, you know. He just he's very unassuming and he's and he's very humble, and at least that's what I hear about him. So um, yeah. if I had if I had to get a book signed or I wanted to, you know, not the artist, Keanu would be the guy to sign a book, and that would you know feel cherish that one right because you know I mean? he, yeah. he means a lot more to that character and to what he does back, so. back to the moderns too i mean i have um i just picked up a berserker one uh tyler kirkham battle damage uh blood foil so low low on the print run i'm about to be at amazing con at the end of the week i'm going to take that with me uh to have tyler kirkham sign it and i'm going to oh, get nice. it you know so hopefully i can get a nine eight yellow label series hold on to that one too that'd be sweet that's another character that i'm like yes, yes. And that's coming out right berserker uh, it, it's rumored for an animated show all right it's rumored for I, an animated. I heard they they uh, optioned it for both but the animated shows first or coming out yeah. next yeah and that's so, a keanu reeves back project too yeah i mean they that's right he was producer on that one i thought from what from what he said he's gonna voice it too correct i think so yeah yeah so. yeah i have in my collection, a, a Matrix One that that's hard to find. 
It's not a nine eight bunny stretch in imagination. But are you talking about the movie? Yeah, the one with the the pods on it. Yep. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. Yeah, it's it's beat up. It's a one. It's like you said, hard one to get in high grade because of the black cover. Well, um, and it was, it was recalled. Yeah, they said that, but I'm like, how do they know it was? They were destroyed. It's like, how do you? Well, they they, that, they recalled it from the people that were distributing it. So if, if they had any leftovers after they gave it out at the movies. They were forced to send it back. Send it back. Yeah. Then I, I thought someone said they sent it back also because it was too violent or something. If you read yeah, Key Collector. Too yeah, too violent. And I, I went through it. I'm like, I, I've seen worse than this. What are they talking about violent? Yeah. Well, I didn't find it. Have you seen the Golden Age books? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, some of those uh, uh, pre horror, pre uh, code horror books. Pre code horror, yeah. I'm like, why did they recall this? I, I couldn't get it. So, again, that book's, I guess, rare, but. Is it, it's not that valuable. I mean, to me, I, I, I'm not going to get rid of it, but you know. Well, right. I mean, it's not, you know, Hulk 181 valuable, but yeah. Give but it, it time. Is probably know? rarer than that book. But again, it's, it's demand versus supply. And there's not a whole lot of demand for it, even though the supply is like this much. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, but yeah. Well, it cool. doesn't help that the last Matrix movie didn't do well either. Oh, my God. Yeah. It was terrible. I mean, I would say the last three Matrix movies were not good, <laughs> but especially the last one. Yeah, the last one was bad. Uh, we don't talk about that one. Yeah, I was I was still looking forward to that one because I heard he was filming Matrix Four and John Wick Four at the same time. I'm like, this guy is an animal. He's making well, both and, of them. After you see John Wick Four, you can tell which one he put more effort into. I think. Uh, yeah, I I look. I wish I would have seen that when it came out I, in the theater. I didn't see any John Wicks in the theater because by the time, again with my kids when it came out, I didn't really go to see those. I mean, right, I would right. see Endgame and whatnot, but I didn't see John Wick in the theater. But I, I'd have to I have to wait on video. But I did the day it came out on HBO Max, Matrix Four, watching that, and I was like, "Damn it, they screwed." I mean, like you said, Rohan, two, three, and four, just they just shit to bed with those ones. Yeah, and I'll be honest, I've I've not seen any of the, the John Wick movies, so I guess I got to do some homework. Yeah, you got a lot of homework. Yeah, I mean, I just uh, I I was at the um, auction today, and I got a new pair of speakers like 25 bucks a pair of paradigm so i set them up in my media room and the only movie i play on my surround is matrix one and i start with the scene when they go into the building and he starts shooting and killing everybody at the bottom of the building to go save morpheus and you can hear all the bullets flying behind you and you can sort of test out your surround sound by using that movie right so i just watched it five minutes ago <laughs> that, that movie's awesome that's the best way to test out surround in my opinion um but again, it's it's a great movie, and you know, it's Jesus. It's twenty five years old, almost. And yeah. to be honest, it's probably ahead of its time. And not to get too political, but I'm sure you guys are aware of the advancements we're making with artificial intelligence. Oh yeah, talk about a movie that might might have predicted the future. Well, I mean, you have that. You have Terminator, kind of had that same theme, and that was ninety two or something like that. Um, I mean, it, it just, 84 and guys, Terminator, Terminator does kind of seem more along the route that we are headed. Right. Yeah. But matrix is like, if the machines wanted to really just outthink us instead of just overpower us, uh -huh. man, that is. Well, so on that note, did you guys see the, was it last weekend or the weekend before the top song on the charts was a Drake and, and weekend collaboration. And it was not made by either of them. It was made by AI. Some YouTube guy took an AI-generated Drake voice, took an AI-generated Weekend voice, wrote the lyrics in their, like, using AI in their, like, tone, and then put this song out, and it hit, like, 11 million listens in the weekend. And it was, like, the top song of the weekend. I missed that. After, that's crazy. Yeah, and uh, AI for artwork right now is pretty popular. Yeah, so, right? yeah the, the AI for artwork, you just type in, you can type in, like, Wolverine eating a shish kebab, and it'll, like, make an image of that. And some say, other, some say it does it better than an actual artist. Yeah. I don't know. We're, Elon Musk, the reason he's trying to get to Mars is because he thinks this Earth is not, we're not long for the Earth. So he's trying to get to Mars to save his ass and however many other people he can. <laughs> um, but I don't, I might, hopefully I'm, I can get on one of those ships like in uh, 2012. They were trying to get, trying to get on all those boats to get out of that, uh, that uh, apocalypse. I'm hoping I can get on his, uh, on the ship out of there but right um but that's interesting with uh the total if you think about matrix 
that movie is an old, not an older, but a 10 year old or 15 year old concept, which was Terminator, and then took another Schwarzenegger movie, which was Total Recall, meshed the two together, and it became this movie on its own, like with a totally different concept. So it, it just seems like it's hard to have new ideas, but if you can take some combination and do it, do it right, um, like the Matrix did, right? You, you can retell an old story and make it better. And I see so often not that these movies try to redo old movies. Again, there's no reason to redo a movie that's 10 years old, like Harry Potter, right? right. There's no reason to redo Total Recall, but take the two ideas and you got your own separate movie that's, you know, like you said, political in nature, whatever. It has all these undertones. It's just, it's a crazy movie, but geez, I mean, it's a cult classic. It's, it's lasting, you know, but Harry Potter, the next uh, version that comes out, you know, are we going to watch it? I, I doubt it. I mean, you don't need to redo stuff that often. I think that just got confirmed for a TV show. Yeah, yeah. on HBO Max. So I'm like, yeah. why all of a sudden now are we doing that? So uh, it just it throws me for a loop that they can't ever make remake movies and the nostalgia doesn't last except – Mario Brothers. People just jumped on that crap. Like, I didn't see it yet. I wasn't a huge gamer, but I mean, eight hundred well, million dollars already. Because that's animated. The one that we know of, we don't talk about that one. You know, yeah. <laughs> we don't talk Another about that live Mario. But yeah, that's that. That's the first animated Mario movie. Yeah, you know, which looks just like the game in a sense, right? I mean, almost spot on to to as it got better in graphics throughout time. Oh yeah, um, it looks like the most recent version of the game for sure. Yeah, but, I mean, and, and video. I mean, you've seen how well the video game movies are about to hit us like no other. Like as much movies that as much money as that movie's making. But think yeah. about from the first Mario Brothers. Who was Mario, or who was he? Luigi. John Lake was almost. John Lake was Luigi. But he's in John Wick, right? So he transcends the the two. So you still got to like John Wick or uh, Lake Wazamo because he was in John Wick, even though we don't talk about the other movie, right? Wasn't John Lake Wazamo also Violator in the Spawn movie? Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah. Is that a movie we can talk about? Because that I was kind of... Which I think there's rumors that that is going to be something in the future. There's going to be a Spawn movie. Yeah, no, we, the, we, and Jamie Foxx is supposed to be Spawn, but apparently, like, the issue is, like, Todd wants it to be, like, He's got he a specific. He's one. He has a specific vision for it, and until it happens his way, it's not happening. But like they've had Jamie Foxx attached to it for like a decade now. Yep. They better hurry up. He's not getting younger. Yeah. No, he's not. No, he's not. But again, that that was a good movie back then as a kid. But does it? I haven't watched it. Rewatched it, so I don't know if that's one that we you know put in the repertoire of '90s nostalgia or just forget about that one with Fantastic Four. From that early 2000s, well, that, was much, that was much older than Fantastic Four, not by much. I don't think it was, I think that was like mid 90s, and maybe Fantastic like a decade, yeah. yeah. But again, I, as we hit, then we had Spider Man, then X Men, and then which those were good. I mean, as do you like just about every X Men movie that came out, or does it stop after? I would say I like them all for what they were at the time. And now that I go back, I mean, I probably could have lived without the third one, and I probably could have lived without the second half of Wolverine. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Wolverine. Yeah. The, the first half of that movie, whether people want to admit it or not, of Wolverine, that's a great movie. Where he goes what about through, the the original origin, the wars. The origin. Yeah, the origin. He goes through the different wars. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like joining like a quote unquote like X Factor X Force. You know, you see Wade Wilson just going through the. The diamond uh, play with all the swords there. I'm like, yeah, yeah. This, this movie's pretty good, actually. You yes, know? it was. I was like, a little bit towards halfway, you're like, all right. Yeah, and, and then it had that weird version of Deadpool in it. You're like, what's that? You know, halfway through, you're like, all right, guys. Yeah. Uh, well, that got Ryan Reynolds fixed that by going back in time and shooting Green Lantern and shooting yeah. Deadpool. So we're good now. <laughs> Talk about a character made to play a role. I know. He's spot on for that one. Um, who else I'm a little is upset another... to you Jackman's coming back. You are yeah. Well, I think would... so. I, I think Hugh Jackman is is I think he's made for the role, was made for the role, but I 
do I'm not opposed like I don't need him back as Wolverine if we're spinning this up again. Like well, I was I, gonna say, like it was a great ending, right? It, it was a man fant- it was a fantastic ending in Logan, right? Totally. That's, that's one of the best superhero movies in my opinion. I love Logan. Great ending. We were just getting to the point where it was like I think a decade, right? Or something like that since he last played that role, seven years, something like that, yeah. right? It was yeah, a good yeah, amount of time. We were just getting to the point of like, okay, that guy will forever be Wolverine. We're ready for a new one now. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, that's exactly right. he's back, man, well, God, God help whoever puts on the claws next. Yeah. Dude, well, that, we're not, we're not going to embrace him. No. It's not going to happen. It's like everyone keeps saying, oh, I hope they bring back RDJ in Secret Wars. I'm like, they better the fuck not. Because that dude went out on one of the most gangster ways a superhero could go out. Yeah, you know, I think that's, that's confirmed. The though. Of that character to date, and if he comes back, all you're doing is resetting the time, the watch on how long it's going to take us to embrace the next Tony Stark. Yep. And I don't like that, man. Because no, I'm scared no, of the next guy, dude. Yeah, and I, that's why I appreciate Chris Evans. Like this last week, has come out and says, like, no, I don't intend to do Captain America. Please don't. Yeah. Yeah, you went out like a boss too. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. Like I was saying earlier about remaking these movies, there's a certain time frame, like 25 years. You can bring back that concept because you the generation changed. For us, RDJ, for us to embrace the next person, you need at least 10 years, right? You 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 need you need a decade of no Iron Man, bro. Yep. So you didn't have Wolverine, so now you're gonna bring him in, and then like you said, who's that guy? Taron Edgerton. Taron Edgerton, I heard it rumored he may play him. So that's uh, now you're going to compare the two. Matter. And it won't matter who plays him if he yeah. if he comes within the next couple of years. Yep. Yeah. But they're even coming. if you're great at it, not my Wolverine. Yeah. No. Yeah, I agree. That's exactly what, what I thought too. Is that? But we, think we about had him. We need something new. With Superman, you had George Reeves, and then so many years later, I mean, Christopher, Christopher Reeves. Reeve. Wait, who's Chris, George Reeves? George, he was from the fifties. Oh, okay. I didn't. Okay. Yeah, so you had him in the in those TV shows then, a guy with a similar name, but thirty years later, almost or twenty years later, and even when Brandon Ralph did the Superman movie, which was in two thousand five, he didn't get embraced, but Henry Cavill, in a sense, did. But everyone always compares those two and anyone after to Christopher Reeves, because George Reeves was so long ago. But you can, at least in my opinion, most people do. So even though it might be 10 years before the next Wolverine is, it, it's it's not, he'll be within a couple of years, but there won't be that distance between uh, Hugh Jackman and the next person. Not enough time. Not enough time. Even if it was 10 or 15 years, you, there's still. And, and you maybe, know what I think more than likely is probably going to happen because he's coming back as Wolverine. I think it's a one and done, and I don't think we're going to have Wolverine for a long, long time because I think if anybody comes back to have uh, claws, it's going to be X twenty three. Uh see, I would, I, I, I would hate, especially that. with the route that the MCU is going. Yes, I yeah. don't need to say it out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, I think we right. all know know what we're talking about there. Yes, exactly. that would be very unfortunate. And that's exactly oh what I think is going to happen. Uh, How many one eighty ones will we be able to buy <laughs> after that happens? It might be a good thing, buy. right? Yeah, it would be a good thing, but I, just, I mean, it just it sucks, man. He he's been a favorite character since he came out in '75, right? I mean, he's been he's right like, after well, Spider Man. He's right after Spider Man. Spider Man and then Wolverine. In yeah, Marvel, I mean, yes, hands down. Yeah, it wasn't Captain America. It wasn't Iron Man. It was Wolverine and Spider Man, and yeah. and that's why they made those movies first. That's why Marvel had to sell those properties because that's where the money was. And now, if we have to wait that long, I mean, I'll be an old man. We're gonna be, time, that's what I'm saying. We're going to be old men when we get a new Wolverine. Jesus. Oh, I yeah. I, I'll tell, I, I hadn't thought about that, but like, if they if it's one and done and then it's just X-23, that is going to be... It's upsetting, right? Yeah. Yes. That, I mean, I'll, I, I feel like... Because you like know I'm striking. right. And, yeah. and they know I'm I, right. I, I didn't I think of that until you just said it. Nobody's going to be embraced But I won't. you're bringing him back. At what point do does? Uh, at what point do they call this game yeah, right? Like, at what point do they call this <laughs> game? Like, they we understand. Okay, we we might as well just talk. Like, they have this whole diversity inclusion 
initiative, we'll just call it. And I don't know, the, Marvel's been a sinking ship like the last of it. two years. And someone else is unhappy in the background. Who's that? <laughs> yeah. Was, well, I mean, the thing is, is like, I mean, I obviously, am I into diversity inclusion? Absolutely. But the thing is, is like the characters that we all love came in the 60s. Like, should we be that upset that like it's all a bunch of white guys? You know, I'm saying like, but that's what we followed for 60 years. And so like when a new character comes out and it's, you know, whatever, like, and we don't, you know, the movie doesn't make a billion dollars. Like, why are people shocked by that is my, well, my question. Here's the thing. If no one, I, we, I don't, I won't go too far with this, but whenever I started into sports, playing sports, my favorite player was Roberto Clemente, Ken Griffey Jr. If someone would have told me that they were, I didn't think they were any different than me. I mean, yeah. obviously they were playing better than I did, right? But if if it's never pointed out, how would you know or care, right? So once yeah. you point out you need to do diversity, then people think about it. But just pick the best person for the role. If 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 uh, Reed Richards was you know an old older guy with a white stripe in his hair, that's who he is, you know. Or change, bring out a new character, build new characters. But we don't have the we don't have that ability. I guess it's it's on Marvel and DC. Well, and it's on Disney is, I think, what what's, is really what, what is it. Yeah, I think it's on Disney. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I I get upset about the Wolverine thing thinking about it. Oh, uh, yeah, that, yeah that, I, that makes me very upset. I did right not now. think about that because that, that was possible. But I think it's a good think point, though, right? right? I mean, I'll, like, I just can't even imagine an X-Men. And it makes movie. sense because she is the one that he died for in Logan. Yeah. Right? You can't tell me he's not going to try to like bring her with him or do something that has to do with her. Yep. I don't believe he's just coming back to be a cameo in a Deadpool movie, which will now be MCU canon. It doesn't make sense. He's either going to stay long term or this is him passing the torch. Yep. And I who's heard... gonna, and that's what I say. Who's going to pass the torch to? Another Wolverine? Like that's going to freaking work? They right. already know it's not going to work. Well, I had heard something along the lines of that there was an issue with them being called the X Men, and they were yeah, to call they, them. I think they've scratched that now, thankfully. So I was thinking that they might just come out with X Factor, and have your original X Men as X Factor. Yeah. Name. So I'm not saying that's a good idea or not, but <laughs> I would I rather have see. I would I would rather have X Factor though than the Mutants or whatever they were going to call it. House of M, I heard, might be what it's they, called. Yeah, they were going to call it the Mutants. Yeah. I th I think X Factor would be a better name than the Mutants, but maybe the Mute. I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm just contemplating the uh, – I think the trajectory is downward on Marvel and upward on DC, Yeah, in my opinion, for the next at the 10 moment, years. At least, for sure. Once that Lobo movie comes out, I'm going to sell my Omega Men 3 and buy a cruise uh, – you know, buy uh, my own uh, – Big cruise boat, and I'm gone. See you later. <laughs> right, South right, right. Uh, so. Speaking of that, did you guys watch the new Flash trailer that came out today? That's just for talking about this kind of stuff. No, no. Yeah, I, didn't it, see it, you. I think the trailer. My that personal thought. Awesome. I hope it is. I mean, I, I mean, I hope it is. To be perfectly honest, when I watched the trailer today, it honestly gave me vibes of Batman versus Superman, the movie. Like when that trailer came out, I was like, "Oh, dude, this is gonna be hot." And then it came out, and I was like, "This is the worst movie I've ever seen in my life." It wasn't that bad. Dude, Batman vs. Superman is like literally one of the worst movies ever made. Dude, that fight scene in, Bat in Batman vs. Superman when he was pummeling those dudes. That was cool. That that was it awesome. has cool moments, but as a movie, cohesively, it is awful. So let me ask, so Theo, you, with, you know, you're selling books at, at night, right? So that's, do these movies have all the, what comes out, what's hot? How does that work with what goes on sale wise? Because if like Rohan hates Man of, or Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman and the rest of the world, you know, that movie didn't have a great showing, I guess that just kills the books. Right. All the spec goes into it and then fizzles right out. Right. I mean, it's right. Does it like selling? Is that what I mean? Is that what I like to hear what the spec books are myself? That's what gets me into hunting for them in the in the wild. But. You know, once it come, it, it came and went. You usually it loses steam, pretty good. So I don't. I mean, I don't sell on whatnot. I don't sell on like just so, eBay. But 
what do you see there? So most of the time, I mean, you're right. If uh, if something if something uh, gets announced, let's uh, let's use She Hulk for example, right? Yeah. So I think when She Hulk got announced, the CGC 9.8 was, don't quote me, but I think like a thousand, thousand plus, you know. Yeah. Rohan bought one. Show did, no, I did not. The, the, the show wasn't positively received. Now I think a nine point eight of that same book goes for like three or four hundred. Yeah. Right, something like that. So that impact is definitely there. My whole thing since I got back into collecting and the more I've been like learning about stuff has been if it's a classic, right? If it's a good story, if it's by a good artist, if it's a first appearance of a character that's been basically t tried and tested throughout time, generally they don't lose that much value. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, so I feel like you got to kind of be picky. Uh, there's a lot of different types of sellers out there. There's sellers that just do new comic book day. There's sellers that just do exclusives. There's some sellers that just do slabs, right? I like to do a little bit of everything. Generally, I stick with the, the bronze and silver age. You know, I'll tiptoe in the golden age. I'll tiptoe in the modern. But generally, I like I, I kind of know my lane, you know. Me and then would you say you've cultivated your audience to that, like the people that follow you, obviously? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, they they know for the most part. If I'm doing a sale, there's going to be some X Men. Um, there's going to be some keys. There's yeah. going to be characters that are announced, unannounced. Uh, there's going to be some. There's going to be some good stories. You know. Yeah. Generally, yeah. generally, they're books that are sought after. Yeah. By collectors, even by sellers. So when you're, how do you, as a question, I always kind of ask people that sell. So you've, you've carved out your lane, as you said, how do you source in the books that you sell to then fit this niche? Oh, cause I'm picky on what I buy. So that's what I'm saying. Where are you buying the books that you sell? Do you buy collections? Like, how do you go about that? So yeah, I pick up collections. I do trades. Um, I work out deals with dealers. And generally what's happened at this point now, and this is why I tell everybody that sells or even somebody that's a collector looking to offload their collection, it's good to have a bunch of different tools on your tool belt, AKA an Instagram or whatnot, eBay, Facebook marketplace, offer up, Macari, et cetera, right? Every single app is meant for a specific type of book. And once you can figure out the best way to sell a particular book on a particular app, that's how you're able to move inventory. So are you on, you're selling on all those platforms then? Uh, all of them, I think, except Macari. But yeah, all of them. I have no luck on Facebook. Row yeah, one has luck. I met up with a guy three days ago. He bought a bunch of dollar uh, bin books off me. I think I sold them like four short boxes. We met up in person locally, he paid me cash. He took four short boxes. Like last week on whatnot, I think I moved about seven short boxes of uh, like DC back issue twenty centers and a bunch of moderns. I just had a I just had a whatnot sale Friday with uh, Nerdy Girl Comics. Shout out to that girl. And that's where I sold keys, slabs, books, basically anywhere from five dollars to a thousand dollars. On whatnot with her? Not on IG. Okay. Oh yeah, I saw that over the weekend. Yeah, with her, I did. I did I see that on IG. You know, like I just posted a couple of slabs of my page on IG. Get about twenty four hours. Uh, then I posted on Facebook. I'll get about another twenty four hours. Okay, I've I've exhausted my efforts on the no fee apps. Now let's go to eBay. Mm. And now it's time to move it. Right. I, I've had no luck on IG. So now you, again, you, I had you got to use you got to use it all. Is what I tell people. You got you got to use it all. There isn't just I, one place to do it all. Yeah, I, I tried IG. I just lost. I just got my account got hacked. Lost all my thousand eleven hundred followers. I finally built up. So I have no one that can no no audience to see those type of books. eBay's worked out for me. Facebook I've tried, but local, you know, you're not selling slabs locally. So again, you got to find your audience. I think that's that's very right. true. Right. But uh, yeah, so I asked. I we had we had. Uh, Dave from West Coast Dave Avengers last week, and I was asking him this question: Are you ever worried, like when you do a, a claim sale, that 
tonight's not going to be the night. Like three people in there. Like, are you ever, is that ever a concern of you? Are you grinded enough that you always know that there's going to be an audience there for it? Like, is that ever, is that a concern or? I get, I get nervous before I go live on any platform. Well, I mean, uh, like, 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 like I do push ups. <laughs> I'll go hit my, I hit my punching bag in my garage. Nice. What's You're little John Wick? Get, get some anger. Yeah. Drink a beer. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. I get nervous every single time I do. And how yeah. many people do you normally have on these on these live sales? I mean, it varies. It varies. So you start off like whatnot starts off with dollar book or something. Is it like pretty low end cost wise? And then uh, you ever get worried too that that book's not going to jump to the point you need it to like an ASM 300, you, you know, does it move fast enough to get to that where you're going to at least break even, you know, like. No, I, I, I still have shows that um, I feel like I got. Ultra. Constantly there's books that I'll sell that they don't have value or something like that. That's yeah, tough. I mean, I think in overall, if you're doing, if you go to a show and you do a bunch of trades and whatnot, not you're not going to make on every trade, but overall, did you do well, right? So you look at it as the big picture. So if you have a good whatnot sale, you might not, have, one book may have got away, but overall, I mean, you walk away most times when whatnot saying, all right, that, that worked out pretty well. One one or two books may have not gone well, I mean, but I mean, for the most part. But I think everybody that sells always needs to remember the golden rule, right? Uh, is it doesn't necessarily matter how much the book is going for. What matters is how much you paid for the book, right? So if you pay for the collection, and most of the books in there equate to a dollar a piece. Well, is it bad that you got fifty when it goes for seventy-five? No, yeah. you know you see what I'm saying. Your margin, yeah. You kind of got to always remember what your ROI is. Yep. So on that note, what do you what do you use to set your price? Like on a not on a whatnot auction, but like when you do a claim sale on IG, you've got I've you know I've watched and you've got prices set up, and obviously you you price them and you're always open to offers and you take offers. I've seen you take offers. Like, but how are you? Like, what's how do you how do you figure out your pricing? Like, what do you use? Always eBay. Okay. Not key collector. Not GPA. Even. Not nothing. I mean, GPA if it's a really big slab, always. And when I say big, maybe five k or more, something like that. You know, um, but eBay always. There's nothing. There, there's no app out there that has more traffic, more eyes, or more up to date sales data. None. Yep. No 100%. way. Everybody that references the price when they're on whatnot anywhere else, they say, "Oh, well, last sold on eBay." Mm -hmm. If you go to eBay. This is what it's listed at. Everybody references eBay. Yeah, hands down, that is the freaking. I was at a show last weekend in Buffalo, and a guy pulled up. I used to use Key Collector and get beat with Key Collector yeah, just yeah. because it's behind the times. And this guy pulled out Key Collector, and I was like, "All right, we can do a trade." <laughs> you know, I'm there like, and, so and that's if why you're buying. You can use other apps to your advantage. Yeah, right. But, eBay's if you're gonna try to flip not flip the book. I don't flip books. I buy a book with good margin that I can use that to sell and buy the actual book I wanted. Right. So it's not that I'm trying to flip it to make a ton of money. I'm just trying to here's the opportunity. I'm gonna get this book to use it as a bridge to get the next book. So right. I try to get enough margin in it and I'll and I'll do that on a trade. But eBay's, you know, you have to look at that to see what that last one sold for, so you know where you're at if you do go to try to sell it on eBay. Well, you know, and, and so. you know, with eBay too, the one thing that should be said is uh, common sense should always be applied, right. So even if the recent sale says, let's say a thousand, all the books that are listed for that book are five hundred. You can't ask a thousand, right? Yeah, because well, somebody could just go on eBay and buy for five hundred. So you have to use some common sense when you're pricing. Yeah. I, I was at a show a couple weeks back and I saw this Titans uh, forty four, which is first Nightwing. Yeah. The guy had it for like one fifty, and I'm like, is this? Is that like a nine eight? You think? Or is this a high grade? He's like, ah, oh, it's probably nine two. 
I go, I can get on eBay for like 50 bucks. I don't use eBay. I'm like, well, then I guess I'll just keep walking. <laughs> you know, I'm not paying your key collector price because I got burned on that way too many times. Well, exactly. Time. And what people don't understand is, uh, and this is why I think the claim sales go so well for me is I price pretty fairly. And you also got to understand that they're buying from you off eBay or off whatnot or whatever it is. Generally, there's no fee. If there is a fee, it's less. And if they wanted to, they could go to eBay where there's no hassle if they're unhappy and they get free return. Yep. Yeah. So you got to make it somewhat enticing. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah it's all, it's all, if you're going on a claim sale, you want a deal. You know, you're, it's entertainment part of it, too. Those are fun to watch, especially when we were cooped up during COVID. If you're home with kids, like we all are, and you want to watch a claim sale. It's a, uh, elite claim sales, and, and the ones you guys do are a ton of fun to watch. I mean, there's so many great books. So um, even if you're not buying stuff, you're still getting some good, good time, good entertainment value. So um, you got to price them effectively. Theo, how much would you say? Let's just say I know that your sales are longer, but let's just say theoretically you had a claim sale that was one hour. How much work goes into that one hour sale before and after? That's a tough question. I would say probably about like two days. Wow, for one hour. That's crazy. Probably about two days, you know, factoring in the hunting of the books, the rebagging and boarding, the grading, the pricing, the advertising, the DMs, the setup. And that's not even including the shipping and invoicing. Yeah, I mean, that's what that's one thing I wonder about. Like, you know, because I see, I watch your claim sale. You got your little post-it notes, and they're like, oh, 1977 Nerd Alert bought this book. And then you got to go back, and you'd be like, okay, who is that? Then I got to DM them, send them an invoice, and then get their address. Like, I, I can't even imagine. Like, it's got to be just take tons. Of, it's not necessarily hard work, but just time-consuming work. Very time-consuming. Yeah. So how many nights a week are you selling? regular like an average about one to two nights oh, okay okay sometimes it's three to five sometimes it's just one but usually one i i i couldn't imagine i mean there's something you know you're but you're doing one live claim sale but you always got something on ebay you got something on facebook you're always working to try to find that couple short boxes like the one you just bought what was it today or yesterday from that one guy so you're always yeah, yeah. it's on it's always on your mind right you might have oh, one you're, you go like football you play once a week on sunday that's the claim sale but then the rest of the week is all the prep work yep. going Practice, to find the deals. Yeah. yeah and then what about what about like cons you i mean you obviously we've seen you we talked with phil you know you guys went to c2e2 um it seems like you go to a, a bunch of cons as well too right uh, well, yeah, I mean, last year I hit it pretty hard. This year, you know, I got Vegas, uh, San Diego, New York coming up. I think maybe Baltimore. I might squeeze in there too. Maybe. I heard that's a good one. Yep. That's a pretty good one for inventory. Some good deals there. I have not been to a big, big show. The biggest one for me is outside of Pittsburgh. A um, lot of collectibles, not as many comic dealers. So mm. I couldn't imagine going to like MegaCon or you know, E2 or C2 E2 or, or I've never been to San Diego comic-con. That'd be pretty cool. So couldn't imagine. Oh no, it's a blast. I mean, it's, it's, it gets a little overwhelming at first, but uh, as long as you go there with like a plan, I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is my budget. Should be pretty good. When you're, but when you're going though, you're selling there though, right? Are you been go? are you going to like, check it out? No, I've never not gone to a con and didn't sell. Oh, okay. But I mean, you have a booth or you get, bring books to sell and trade there, or do you always have a booth as of recent? No, I've never had a booth. I don't think I ever want to have a booth because I worked at a booth and all my friends have booths and I know what goes into that. And I just don't want anything to do with that. I like to move. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be just stationary. Uh, but generally when I go to a con, it's because I'm teaming up with somebody and dropping an exclusive. Like I dropped a John Wick exclusive in Chicago. Um, 
I'll be working with Tyler Kirkman in Vegas, dropping a final boss. Oh, uh, there, there's other friends of mine that are dropping exclusives. You know, I'll, I'll get books from them and sell it on whatnot, things like that. Um, but generally, every yeah, every time I go to a con, I'm selling books. Got it. So the friends that you, you've met, now you, you're in the three years. How did all that sort of come about that you're able to do exclusives with Tyler Kirkham, um, the John Wick? Like, how, how does that come about? Like, that's got to be a dream to be able to go from uh, wanting to be in the comics as a kid to now sort of almost being part of it in a sense, right? I mean, you're not writing or drawing them, but you're there doing exclusives. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm definitely in the mix. Um I mean, it's definitely cool. The way it came about, though, I have no idea. Um, the way, I, the way, I, the, what I tell every seller who asks me kind of like similar questions, and they kind of say, well, well, well what can I do to kind of stand out or get noticed or a little bit more recognition? And <laughs> you want to know what my response is every time? Sure. Don't go looking for it. Yeah. So like the Tyler Kirkham thing, that well, came like, to you? Well, well, no, like so. So he, it's a, it's a part of his uh, book. So he, he's the, the uh, artist for Final Boss. This is Final Boss issue two. So, like for example, for this one, there's a group of people already making it. They asked me to get involved in it, right? So, like the, the what I do for a lead on Instagram, right? He asked me to do that. Or how I, I you know, I'm selling with uh, Comic Tom on whatnot Wednesdays. I was approached for that. And so my best advice for anybody is to never go looking for it. Just fucking know your lane, honk the horn and flash the brights. And anybody that gets in your way, run them the fuck over. And eventually <laughs> people will hear you. That's my best advice. Eventually somebody's going to hear what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so with that in mind, would you say, <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. So you're know your lane, honk the horn and flash the and right. run the fuck over. Okay. Run anybody over that cuts you off. Yep. Um, on that, so you've been doing this for a few years now. Would you say in those early years that How many you people have you like, run over? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but I mean, were you, were you just like, you know, hustling those first few years then? And now you kind of got yourself set up with, you know, the audience that you've built. And uh, I mean, I still kind of do the same thing, just a little bit different, a little bit more structured. Uh, but I still do the same thing. I still hunt. I still go live whenever I want. Um, I don't care what anybody else is doing or when they're doing it, because when I'm doing what I want to do, that's all that really matters to me. You know? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I don't really care what people like say or what they think, because like I know I know what I'm about, and my audience knows what I'm about. And honestly, I mean, it's kind of like that Kobe mentality. You know, it's like look for an excuse to think somebody's thinking a certain way about you and use it as fuel to destroy them. Yep. That, that makes sense. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. The mob mentality when it comes I've, to comic books. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm always in the mindset. It's always better to have more friends than enemies. Um, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't also go out of your way to like kill it yourself. Right. There's no, nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody's going to tell you that you're doing a good job. So you just got to fucking do it, you know? Yep. Yeah, you, exactly. So I, I, I hear it. you got to motivate yourself. And most of the time, your friends are going to tell you what you want to hear, you know? Right. So no one's going to give you constructive criticism. Your, your enemies will. And then you use both. Yeah. Use that as ammunition to make yourself better. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, we're, I'm, in three years, that's pretty impressive how far it's gone for you. So I, I, uh, I'm, I'm impressed with that. No, I don't have any aspirations myself to, to, to do that. I've, I've enjoyed where it's gone, but like you said, don't look for it, right? Do your thing, stay in your, stay in your lane, run them over if they're in front of you yep. and eventually it'll come to, to what it's supposed to be. Right. You exactly. Phone of what you're going to do. And, and everything uh, I'm involved in now, I, I had no uh, intention or even hindsight that when I started, that's what I'd be doing. Right. And that includes selling. So you just you went into it just to collect and went, oh, I, I think I can, you know. I, I just wanted to collect and do my own thing. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I didn't even, I didn't even, honestly, I wasn't even trying to make friends. <laughs> I, now I see you at these cons. I'm like, man, that looks like fun. Yeah. Everyone's going yeah, out. Right? I'm like, I had no intention of going to a Comic Con ever. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, when I picture Comic Con fun, I picture Big Bang. 
and what those guys do before or after a con. <laughs> but that's not what you guys are doing. So <laughs> looks like fun. So I can appreciate oh, that. Oh, well, you know, I like to go out too. I mean, I, I try to bring as many people as I can when I do. You know, I like to dance. You know, I like mojitos. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's like a it's like a fraternity party, but with comics, right? Basically, people you, people you can share it with because you couldn't talk about it in college. You couldn't talk about it in high school or else you got, you know, yep. beat up. But now you can if you got the right group of people. So are there the same amount of girls at the comic book parties as they are at the fraternity parties? Uh, I guess it depends on what fraternity party. You have to go <laughs> yeah. Probably say more. Oh. More? Yeah. A, lot right. of, a lot of cosplayers, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. True. There's people that like cards, people that like uh, Funkos. Dress up you know? like this, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, all all those hobbies kind of intersect into one another. Yeah. That's yeah. the coolest part about it. I, I've seen some some cosplayers I follow on IG, and then they're at that the con I go to in, in Pittsburgh, and it's like I could imagine how many more are at the big shows. Oh, yeah, you know, especially like a San Diego or New York. My God. Yeah, you got those two big areas with all the best-looking ladies. So like uh, last year when I went to Baltimore uh, with a bunch of my friends, we went to a um, – it wasn't necessarily like a club, but it was like an outdoor festival. But, I mean, they were basically flashing lasers and playing great techno music. You know, imagine like a, a Blade bloodbath scene with no blood, oh. right? It's <laughs> yes. kind of like that. And uh, what was nice was because it was, it was right around Halloween – and because it was only a couple blocks from the con, I shit you not, everybody that was there was dressed like a superhero really? or a villain or some something having to do with comic book culture. That's awesome. It was pretty insane. And, you know, I, I dress in a black suit. It's very easy for me to cosplay, which I love, you know. Yeah. I'll just put a black suit, take the ponytail out, good to go. John Wick. Yep. Easy. <laughs> um, it's easy. But, yeah, there were... Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, well, every character you could think of was dancing in a club. I was like, this is pretty amazing. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, pretty amazing. I'd, I'd love to see that. Yep. Yeah. What what cons do you have uh, coming up this year that you're going to? Uh, so Vegas at the end of this week and then uh, San Diego, New York. Okay. I still have ambitions to hope to get it, get some tickets and go to San Diego this year. So that would be cool. That is the con to go to. Yeah. Hands down. Is it the con to go to to buy stuff or the con to go to to experience nerd life? Both, because if you get exclusives there, like the SDCC specific exclusives, man, as you guys have known, those things hold value. Yeah. Yep. And some of those, you can go ahead and sell those the next day or that day on eBay. It might just pay for your trip. That's what I heard. Yeah, those those basically pay for the trip, if not a little bit more. So yeah, if you get lucky enough to get two of them, you sell one, paid for and, your trip, and, and you're not worried about it. You know, you keep them. Maybe it turns into a Hellboy. You know, maybe yes. it turns into some, you know something else. Yeah, that Wizard One San Diego edition. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. you just never know. Does everybody get one that goes there? Or is it the first so many people? Yeah, usually those are limited to like a thousand. I think. Oh wow. Yeah, so it's like you really got to know what's coming out. You got to be there in line. Like you got to be ready. Yeah. yeah, that's. I can't imagine that. I I that Big Bang episode where they were trying to get tickets and they were like the minute it went out, they're hitting their buttons. You know, refresh, 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 and they none of them got in. I could just yep. imagine how nuts that place is, unless you got a good way to get into it. Or well, I I tried to get. It. We tried at the original um, sale this year for because I want to go. And they're like, okay, you got in line and you're in the waiting room. And I'm like, I think the waiting room for us was like 65 minutes. And I actually had my son had a, like a basketball game. So I was in line on my phone while I was at his basketball game. And as his game ended, they're like, okay, you're coming up. And then I got there and it was like two minutes left. And then I got one minute. I was like, okay, here we go. And then it got to me and it was like, there are no more tickets available. And I'm like, why did you have me wait this long then? Like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and they should know how many tickets there that are left. There you go. So. Uh, Oh, that'd be cool, man. I, I, maybe I'll get there someday. Rohan, you got a buddy who lives across the street. Yeah, my friend literally lives. They have a condo across the street. So if I get tickets, I have a well, free from, place to uh, stay. San Diego. Yeah, look, legitimately, like I looked on Google oh, Maps, their place is cool. legitimately across the street. So if I get tickets, I have a place to stay. And yeah, so that that's that's the easy part. That's cool. Right. I got a buddy out in San Diego too that lives close, but uh, I don't know how much tickets would cost and flight out there and all that kind of stuff. It'd be uh, 
it'd be an undertaking to get out there, especially with four kids. So yeah, from PA, that would be a that would be, be a haul. Yeah, I went to Long Beach last year. That was that was a long trip, but it was fun. I'd do it again. Go to San Diego Comic Con, but I'm sure it's nuts. And you should check out. Crowds. You should check out New York though. Sometimes, JP, that's not too far from you. Uh, it's about yeah, eight hours. Yeah, New York's a great great time. I might do that. You said you'll be there this year, right? New York and yes, Vegas yeah, I and I will be there. San Diego. Yeah. And Baltimore is another big one. So those are probably your C two E two. Those are top five, I would think, right? Yeah, I mean those would be top five. I hear uh, Heroes Con in is it North or South Carolina? I think those are. I think that's a really good con too. I, I keep hearing about that. I said when I retire, I wanted to go around and see every football stadium. I may change that if my Steelers continue to stink. That uh, I may just go to every comic con I can. So <laughs> I'll be like old man Logan going to every sh- every comic show. <laughs> yeah, young, be cool. young kids. So that'd be yeah, that'd, that'd be, be cool. sweet. So yeah. Yeah, no, um, we appreciate you being on. I know you want to keep it to an hour. Everyone's got kids to get back to. Um, yeah, I got to cook dinner. Anything else you wanted to, to mention before uh, we, we we cut out today? No, not too much. I mean, you know, um, anybody watching this, if anybody has any questions, you can always reach out to me on Instagram. Uh, I think that's the best way to hit me up in the DMs. That's uh, I'm on there the most. You know, I do the weekly whatnot sales. And uh, no, I just launched a uh, website, actually. Oh, what, what's the website for? Uh, just post oh, to post sell. What I'm doing. If I have any extra excess inventory, maybe if I don't want to put it on eBay or something like that, I'll put yeah. it on there. Um, yeah. I think right now I'm doing a giveaway so people can uh, sign up for a newsletter. So I might start using the newsletter when I'm doing an IG claim sale or something like that. Yeah. Oh, and I will tell for anyone listening, um, if you haven't checked it out, uh, Theo and Phil, uh, one true last nerd king, they yeah, did an interview you. with they did an interview with Darren of Fantast Comics, who is the selling Superman film, and it's excellent. I, right. Uh, right. Yeah, and I, I would highly recommend watching that. We're actually interviewing Darren next week. Um, oh, he's a great dude. He's a great dude. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, your guys' interview with him was was excellent. So I really it was got it was after watching that interview that I messaged Darren. I was like, hey man, if you're open to coming on, like we'd love to have you nice. on as well. So yeah, it was great. I loved it. Yeah, YouTube's been pretty interesting. It's been about almost three months, I think. We're about 60 away from a thousand yeah you guys are crushing jp we actually started like like i think a couple weeks before you guys started but where you guys are crushing us (laughs) oh it's not a competition youtube's for fun dude oh yeah youtube yeah we get excited when we get you know more than 100 views on ours you know yeah (laughs) so but yeah that's awesome so i'll I'll i was checking out your show because i know phil's a huge star wars guy so uh, he was telling me to watch the Clone Wars and get into that. So yeah, he was, sell- was- he was selling us hard. Really on Clone Wars. teaching me everything on Star. I'm new. I'm like yeah. a rookie. Yep. I'm a paddle. You saw the movies though, right? All of them. All okay, because I know people that are my age that never saw Star Wars, and I'm like, what's wrong with you? How did you That's not blasphemy. see Star Wars? Yeah. That's blasphemy. I'm like, you were 10 years old when it came out. I mean, Jesus. So, but yeah, uh, we're looking forward to checking out your website, seeing you on IG. Um, we're hoping to have you on again sometime to BS, maybe see you at a show. We make it to the, uh, to the different the coasts. Yeah. Yeah. So now we appreciate you coming on. It's hey, great you guys to have you. Go to a Let me know. I'll get you a mojito. There awesome. we go. I love it. All right. Sounds great. All right, Theo, man. It was great to, great to meet you tonight. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me on guys. I appreciate thanks, yeah, everybody for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out. <laughs>